It's March 13th, 2013, and this is the Energy Education Podcast. I'm Kevin Hurley. Well, problems continue for the San Onofre Nuclear Power Plant. Today, we're discussing the release of a redacted report which shows that the nuclear plant operator, Southern California Edison, not only knew of problems with the proposed steam generator upgrade, but concealed that information from the public. We'll talk about how Southern California Edison made the decision that this upgrade would not require notifying the NRC before the bidding contracts even went out. Joining us today to discuss this matter, Arnie and Maggie Gunderson. So, Maggie, let's start with you. San Onofre, in the news again. What's going on with this redacted report that's now being released, that now has been released? Oh, that was a, a, a major snafu for several weeks. This was done in a typical NRC fashion. They did a news dump on a Friday afternoon. As a former journalist, I can tell you that any time a public agency, congressional representatives... Or a corporation didn't want us to get a news story in a timely manner. They dumped it on a Friday afternoon. And what was a surprise about this is this was the NRC carrying the water for Edison. It, the NRC released this piece of news, this report, and did it on a late Friday afternoon so that nobody would be looking at it or thinking about it by the time Monday rolled around. So are you saying this is news they don't want us to pay attention to? I'm saying this is news they don't want you to pay attention to. They don't want you to know that Edison was well aware that they had avoided the 50.59 process that's part of the federal statute and that they knew what guideline they had to follow. MHI, Mitsubishi Heavy Industries, which built the steam generators for Edison, is the one that wrote this report that shows the timeline, shows what was covered up. And the report is redacted. So Maggie, I'd like you to talk a little bit about what a redacted report means. But before that, let's go over to Arnie and get a little bit of background on exactly what this press release is exactly about. Well, I think first we need to talk about what 5059 means. And that's a paragraph in 10 CFR, which is nuclear law. And so it's paragraph 50.59. It isn't really prescriptive, but basically it tells the owners of a nuclear power plant that if they make a significant change to a piece of hardware in the plant, they have to license that change with the NRC. You know, the NRC doesn't want to see a, a, a real minor thing like you know um, <clears throat> changing a, a pipe for essentially the identical pipe. They don't care to be involved in that process. But when you make a significant change in a power plant, the NRC says, okay, we have to review that as part of your license. And, oh, by the way, the public will be involved in the licensing process. So that's what 5059 means. So, of course, this is all about San Onofre making major changes that they should have involved the NRC in, but, of course, didn't because they wanted to avoid public involvement. The manufacturer of the new equipment that they were replacing the old equipment with, wrote, uh, Mitsubishi Heavy Industries, wrote a report. And now this report is just coming out in total, correct? The um, Mitsubishi, the people that built the generator, had a report that the NRC has been aware of since October. But Senator Boxer's staff and Representative Markey's staff became aware of this report and no one in the public knew that the NRC had this report. So because of uh, Boxer and Markey, they put some pressure on the NRC. And you know, as Maggie explained, that the, the report was finally released in a redacted form last Friday afternoon, real late in the day. And what does this report explain? Well, we know more than we expected to know because when they redacted, what, what they've left out is specific names of people who said specific things, but they didn't leave out the information that verifies what Fairwinds and Arnie and I have been saying for more than a year. Redacted means that they literally take a magic marker and black out areas that they don't want the public to see, and they claim that it's um, in the public interest or it protects the identity of someone. When Arnie was a whistleblower, uh, we got a report about his 
experience as a whistleblower, and it was so heavily redacted, so blacked out, you couldn't make sense of any of it. Later on, in, in response to the NRC having done that to us, the United States Senator, a United States Senator, gave us a copy of the unredacted report, and it was amazing to hear and le to read and learn and see who had broken the law within the NRC in handling our case. So this is similar in that the NRC has determined what they thought we had a right to know as the public, and I think that process should be much more open and transparent. So, Arnie, what technically was in this report? Well, the report is a timeline of all the design decisions that went into building this steam generator. The, the steam generator was <coughs> awarded by Edison to Mitsubishi in 2004. The project to build it, the contract. Mitsubishi was uh, allowed by the NRC to remove some sections of the report that they gave in total to the NRC back in October. And the, um, the sections that were left behind clearly show that starting in about 2005, Mitsubishi had reservations about the steam generators. They were concerned about something called a high void coefficient. And basically that means that there was no water at the top of the steam generator and it was all steam. Well, there's a problem there. You know, if you run your hand through a bathtub, there's some resistance to the flow of your hand. But if you, if you run your hand through air, your hand moves freely. Well, a steam generator counts on water to keep the tubes from bouncing off each other. So back in 2005, the, uh, the steam generators were determined by, by Mitsubishi to have a high void coefficient, higher than they'd ever seen before. Um, they told Edison about it. And together, they tried to make some changes. But in order to make the steam generator problem go away, in order to solve the problem, they would have had to notify the NRC. And Edison didn't want that to happen. Last summer, a whistleblower at Edison gave Friends of the Earth the contract, the draft contract between Mitsubishi and, and Edison. And Edison had a clause in the draft contract that said, basically, we've made up our mind. We are not going to tell the NRC anything about this nuclear steam generator. And Mitsubishi, you're going to agree that the outcome is predetermined. So in 2004, when they let this contract, Edison and Mitsubishi had already agreed that there, there was no way they were going to tell the Nuclear Regulatory Commission that it was subject to being licensed. If this was before the bidding process was complete, how would they know if the project or if this redesign would require them to notify the NRC or not? How would they know until the uh, bids came back in? Well, that's the great question. They didn't know the answer, but they forced the answer. They, they knew they didn't want the public involved, and therefore they forced Mitsubishi to come to that conclusion. There was no way when this, these steam generators were being bid that they could have reached that conclusion. And so they had to do the analysis first. But Edison put the cart before the horse. They said, this is the answer to your analysis. The answer is we're going to keep the NRC out of this process. So before the analysis was done, Edison told Mitsubishi what the answer was going to be. Arnie, you're saying that Edison used this as a blueprint rather than a guideline for the process. So the contract that was led in 2004 became a blueprint to evade the 50-59 process. So now we get to 2005, and what the new Mitsubishi report shows is that Mitsubishi had red flags in 2005. And Mitsubishi talked about the red flags to Edison. And the report also says that the reason they didn't change the steam generator from a design they knew had problems was because they were forced by the contract not to tell the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. To my way of thinking, that's certainly absolutely backward. You do the analysis first, and then you go on what the analysis says. They did the contract first, which forced the answer. 
So, Arnie, wasn't 2005 when Edison had huge whistleblower complaints? Yeah, the worst plant in the country since the new century has been San Onofre for whistleblower complaints. And right at the peak of San Onofre's whistleblower complaints, which was right around 2005, is exactly at the same time that Edison was trying to steamroll Mitsubishi. So Edison's management was steamrolling their own employees. We know that because they've got a huge number of whistleblower complaints in the same time span. And by contract, they were also trying to steamroll Mitsubishi. So as Edison was moving forward with the bidding process, they had already defined that those companies bidding on the building of these new steam generators would not involve the NRC. That decision was made before the bid even went out. That was part of their bidding contract, you're saying? Correct. That is correct. The process that the NRC wanted Edison to use, this 5059 process, was hijacked. The contract hijacked the NRC's process and predetermined the answer well before the analysis was ever done. And that's why you have a billion dollar debacle where these steam generators, these replacement steam generators, were designed by Mitsubishi and fabricated by Mitsubishi without proper review by the NRC. And the ratepayers are on the hook for a billion dollar loss. But of course, if these steam generators never failed, it would be a much different story today. What we know would be a much different story today. This could have easily all slid in the background and gone undetected. Edison made enormous changes to these steam generators. And they were hoping that everything would hold together and the steam generator wouldn't fail. But whenever you make enormous changes to a major component like that, really that's the flag that should let the NRC know. So they wanted it both ways. They, they wanted to keep the public out of the process. And now they want the public's money because they screwed up. And they wanted to keep the NRC out of the process. Had, they, had the NRC asked the same questions that the NRC asked of other steam generators that were going through the process around the same time, if the NRC had asked those questions to Edison, this problem would have been detected in 2005, and the ratepayers of Southern California wouldn't have been stuck with a, at least a billion and counting overrun on a project that should have been pretty darn simple. There's one more component to me. The NRC's role in this, Arnie testified with Friends of the Earth in front of special hearings, in front of Petition Review Board, 2.206 Petition Review Board, in January, and all kinds of documents were sent in, and there are also testimonies and affidavits from the experts to the ASLB, Atomic Safety and Licensing Board. The NRC had these documents and knew that Edison was misrepresenting and had lied publicly to regulators. They had these documents since October. And yet they made the experts sign all these non-disclosures and do all this rigorous analysis and testimony, a lot of testimony that's been withheld from the public because they were under non-disclosures for so-called proprietary information. And here we have the NRC had this and knew all of this was true and had happened as Fairwinds said we thought happened last spring. You know, Kevin, I was uh, testifying in front of this 2.206 Petition Review Board back in January. And the week before I went to the Petition Review Board, the NRC received a letter from Edison that basically said they had no knowledge that there were any problems with this steam generator. That's uh, in January 9th of this year, Edison wrote to the NRC, so they had no knowledge. What the Mitsubishi report that just came out told us is that Edison did know for years that there was thermodynamic problems with this steam generator. So the letter they wrote to the NRC in January is obviously what we call materially false. Now, the NRC didn't have to wait for this report to be sent out in redacted version to make that determination. The NRC had this report in October. So why didn't the NRC look at this same Edison letter that I attacked and say, your letter's materially false. You're not telling us the truth. 
So, you know, it doesn't surprise me that the NRC would release this uh, document in a news dump on, uh, on a Friday afternoon because, in fact, uh, you know, they have been complicit in the process since at least October when they received this Mitsubishi report. From a personal standpoint, I'd really like to see the GAO, General Accounting Office, get involved and look at this uh, and take a look at, at a complicit action of the NRC in covering up a material and false statement made by Edison. So this last question goes to the two of you. Now that this letter is out, where do you suspect the story goes from here? Personally, I think there's a lot more information that still isn't out there and that this is just the tip of the iceberg. Arnie, what do you think? Well, I think there's two prongs to the story now. The first prong is within the NRC. We do know that the Office of Investigation, that's the NRC's cops, are investigating Edison. And I think this should give more ammo to the, uh, to, to the policing function at the NRC on this issue of, did you tell us the truth back in 05 and 06 about the steam generator problems? So that's prong number one of the argument. But the second one goes to California. Why should Californians be paying a billion dollars to repair this mess when Edison knew it was going to be a problem in 2005? So I think that the California Public Utilities Commission should take a look at this and say there's no way ratepayers should be on the hook for this when Edison chose to avoid the process to keep the public out in 2005 and now wants the public's money to cover up for the mistake in 2013. And I disagree with Arnie on one part. I have to say this. And, you know, the Office of Investigation never finds criminal activity by utilities. It never, it goes after whistleblowers. You can ask Dave Lockbaum about that, and we had that show earlier about whistleblowers. The Office of Investigation rarely finds anything. So I'll still stand by what I said. The GAO should get involved because the NRC can't police itself. It never has. Maggie and Ernie, thanks for coming on. You're welcome, Kevin. It was great to be here again.